Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and this is episode 10 of my Automate Everything series for Modern Minecraft 1.16. In today's episode, I will be automating the production of lithium dust and sodium from the mod mechanism, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is water, and I have a water source set up over here. I just need to pump it. So I need to pump the pump directly over a water source block, and that's what I've done here. And this pump does have speed upgrades, as you can see right here, to make it quite a bit faster. So let's go ahead and hook this up to an energy source, and then we can move on and start to create the the thermal evaporation chambers that we'll need to actually make the brine, and then into the uh, the brine into the lithium as well. So the first step here is the we're going to have a thermal evaporation chamber, which is a multi-block structure from the mod mechanism. And we are going to build this to turn water into brine. And then we're going to build another of these thermal ev evaporation chambers to turn brine into lithium. And then we're gonna eventually turn that lithium into lithium dust. Uh, so half of this brine is actually going to be sent, or some of it anyways, is going to be sent to a different system that will actually make sodium. So uh, I'm going to make two of the thermal evaporation chambers here. And as you'll notice, the first one is open topped. They need to be open topped. And uh, the first one is going to be larger than the second one because like I just said, some of the brine will be sent to a different system. So what we need to do to complete these multi-block structures is add a thermal evaporation controller. Right there, I just have thermal evaporation blocks but I'm going to add controllers and this will make these into valid structures. However, these structures are not actually usable yet because they do not have any valves and the valves are how you get liquids in and out of them. So let's go ahead and add some valves. So I'm actually going to add three valves to each one of these chambers and that is because uh, the third valve on each chamber will be used for a heat input. Uh, Obviously, we need an input and an output valve on each chamber, so that's where the first two come from. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the heat valve for this one, and then the output valve right here. So there we go. We have our thermal evaporation chambers complete. So what we need to do now is we need to get water into this thir first thermal evaporation chamber, and we can do that through just some uh, piping here. Uh, any liquid conduit should work. Uh, and there we go, we got water into here, and this thermal evaporation plant will work without adding heat. However, it will work very slowly. If we add heat, it will go much quicker. So that's what we're going to do through the use of resistive heaters. So these resistive heaters uh, actually have two sides that can connect to either energy conduit or uh, can provide heating, and they are the green sides right here. So what we need to do is we need to put these to where they are up against these valves, and that will provide the plant with heat. So that's what we are going to do. Now one cool thing about these resistive heaters is they are configurable. Uh, you can have them provide more or less heat depending on how much energy you pump into them. So right now you can see the production is around seven millibuckets per tick. However, if we crank up the heat, so as you'll notice it is using four, 40 forge energy per tick. If we make that 1000, uh, it will make this produce a lot more brine per tick. And as you can see, production is skyrocketing. So that is a little excessive. I'm going to turn this down to 100 forge energy per tick, and that should be more than enough, to be honest. So now what we need to do is we need to get that brine out of this first tank and into the second tank. And we are going to use ultimate mechanical pipes once again to do that. And we need a configurator to turn this into an output. And there we go. We have brine in this second evaporation plant. And that brine will be turned into lithium right here. And we are going to take that lithium and send it to a rotary condensator. So let's put the condensator right here. And we do need to change the mode into the... Um, so there's different two different modes. There's condensating mode and then there's decondensating mode. And this is the mode that we will need. So let's go ahead and hook up some mechanical pipe here and set this to be an output. And there we go, we have lithium, liquid lithium coming in and we are uh, creating lithium here. That lithium needs to be sent to a chemical crystallizer and we are going to put that right here. So I do have this already configured so that the right side is output with eject already on. 
So that is already ejecting into the crystallizer, which makes lithium dust, which is used to create induction cells from the mod mechanism. So lastly, we do need to hook this up to energy to keep this running. So let's do that real fast right there. So there we go. And so to make the sodium, we actually need to take this brine and we need to send it to an electrolytic separator. So let's put that electrolytic separator right here and give it some brine. So it already had brine in it because I was practicing creating this system. So there we go, we're getting brine and that create that separates the brine into sodium and chlorine. So the chlorine will be output to the left, it is output two, and then the uh, sodium is output to the right. So I already have tanks with a little bit of chlorine and a little bit of sodium in them. So the chlorine tank is right there and the sodium tank is over here. And as you can see, the sodium is going up. So this sodium can be used in a fission reactor that is sodium cooled. Uh, fission reactors can either be water cooled or sodium cooled. Uh, I prefer the water cooled reactor because it's just a simpler design. But if you want your reactor to be able to create more power out of the same footprint, uh, sodium cooling is the way to go. And this is how you can create some sodium. So this is how you create a fairly simple system to create both liquid or uh, uh, lithium crystals and uh, sodium. Um, if you feel like you learned something today, feel free to drop a like down below. And if you like watching automation type stuff in modern Minecraft, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 8 and I will see you next time.